Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Pattaya, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information and advice. Now, I was walking around Soibacal, it's a lovely day today, and I thought I'll come in to the Hungry Hippo, and who better to chat to than the owner, the man himself, Robin, how you doing, my man? How are you doing, Trevor, all right? Yeah, you're looking, yeah, that's a yeah. firm handshake he's got there, Let's do frying chip and the eggs, isn't you? Flipping out, what's that, man? <laughs> <laughs> Now, we are in Hungry Hippo. If you're not sure where the Hungry Hippo is, two things. One, shame on you, because you should know where it is, and two, have a look right now. There's a map there showing the location of exactly where I am. So, you are the man behind Hungry Hippo, Chunky Monkey, Jollies, Robin's Nest. I mean, is Correct. there anywhere you're not involved in? Um, they were in the earlier <laughs> days. <laughs> now, before we talk about the restaurants that you've got here and obviously about Hungry Hippo, I want to know a bit more about yourself. I mean, where are you from originally? Wales. In Wales? Wales, yeah. Wow, whereabouts? Pembrokeshire. Oh, okay. Pembrokeshire. I went to Merthyr Tidville once. Oh, <laughs> yeah. for example, and, of Wales. And, and the Brecon Beacons, but that was when I was in the <laughs> army, flipping on Now, that wasn't fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, the worst part. <laughs> in, in Wales, what were you doing back there? Oh, I was, um, I moved up the line into London area, but I was a manager with Tesco, yeah. Royal Mail, Exxon Mobil, um, engineering company. So I've been in management all my life, you know. So you've been in management? And yet there's no connection there to cooking, yet you've got one of the busiest restaurants. I was actually in born <laughs> in a restaurant in oh. London, but we were moved out overseas because my father was in the military. Yeah. And we spent all our lives in Wales when we come back. And yeah. most of my brothers are born in Wales. And we got, I used to work for Bass. I okay. used to run Cardiff number one pub. So we got a lot of um, food going in and out there. Yeah. Tesco's, we were trained in all the various food departments. So I know about food there. Yeah. And then I used to work for Exxon Mobil as a forecourt manager with a big store in the middle, food again there. Wow, because so, Tesco's now got their own restaurants, haven't they, inside all yeah, the Yeah, they've, they've, they've always had restaurants and all yeah. that, yeah. So it's all, you know, how we deal with food, basically, look after food. Um, it's only the bass and okay. other restaurants I've worked in. So from Wales to Patea. There's a slight contrast in, you know, areas and lifestyles. I mean, how well, my father was, when did you get here? My father was military, so we yeah. were well-traveled, okay. for starters. And when I hit the crazy age of 16, 17, 18, I traveled everywhere, you know, Australia, New Zealand. You didn't come here at Europe. 17, 18. No, 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 but, you know, all the other places that yeah. people do backpacking. Um, and then when I was about, God, thinking now, I was about... 29.30, I moved to Thailand. I always wanted to move to Asia. Okay. And in those days, everything was rocking and rolling. It mm. was great. I started in Bangkok. I had a look around there. Moved down to um, Phuket. Right. It just wasn't busy enough in Phuket in those days. Um, basically, they had Bangla Road and a couple on the front. You know, oh, we're going okay. back a long time. Yeah. Um, so I come up here because that's where the people are. Mm. A lot of tourists. So when you first came to Patea, what year was that roughly? Oh, God, now we're thinking. About 25 years ago. 25 years ago, yeah. wow. Yeah. So back 25 years ago, Walking Street was more of a dust road, wasn't it? Had it evolved by then? 22nd, it was all changing. It was all just going for the big explosion yeah. when I got here. So you witnessed that explosion? I mean, this, this whole area was nothing. Wow. Robin's Nest was the first hotel restaurant yeah and we had a Rika Lodge one across the road and the little one then um, Jason opened up in Champagne about six months after with Paul in Eden massage and then the Oasis opened up and it was just all opened up after that I mean do you ever sit here now and look around and think my lord what has gone on since <laughs> I've got here well I, running the two restaurants Jolly's and Robin Ness in those days we were just rammed every day and I wonder how I did it, but obviously I was a lot younger. I'm, I'm not joking, we were, we were pumping and we get buffets on on both of them every night, breakfast buffets. And we were doing a thousand meals on each you know, unit, plus all the hotel rooms. But the whole place was absolutely buzzing, you know, it was, yeah. it was crazy in those days. People were coming in, you know, ten to the dozen, the restaurants were always full, your rooms were always full. You know, there was development everywhere. 
Mm. Yeah, that I was guess, a really good times. Because, like, obviously, back in them days, you've seen the whole place evolve. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, even now, in the midst of what we're going through, which is a horrific time that nobody could have ever predicted. No. They're still developing, though. Yeah, the development now, if you've been brought up in management, we know why they do this. This is money invested for the future. Mm. It's the best time to build now because labor's cheap, everything's cheap. Mm. But this money has always been, already been set aside before COVID. You know, they, they look to the future for 10 years' time. And that is what we will, the Soy Cow area and the Third Road, masses of hotels going up. Obviously, we would imagine this is for the Chinese tourists yeah. because we got the access for all the... Um, buses in and out mm. you know a prime example is the new soy excite market yeah uh, that's purely yeah. for the chinese to go in is and that out. what's going to go there because it's funny yeah. like on the channel like quite a few people often ask me about you know what do i think that's going to be and obviously i've walked around yeah oh, i don't really know what's going to be inside because obviously i'm not privileged mm -hmm. to that information and it does kind of look like glorified touristy kind of thing i mean is that what your the vision for is sure it? it's, it's access you look the uh, the the buses can pull straight in straight out the Chinese will walk around. It's, it, it's mainly for the Chinese tourism. Obviously, other tourists will go there. Mm. But um, I, I was in Vietnam and we seen Nha Trang turn around like this. Okay. So where we had all the food sellers on the streets, they were all taken off. All the businesses were taxed and vatted. So obviously the government got the revenue for all the um, work they're doing around on the streets, bins, beaches, drains and all that. Yeah. And it totally went to a whole business city. So, because, you know, looking at that, that place at Soy Excite, like we're talking about now, I mean, if you go back and look at that in terms of the access, do you see potentially that could be an avenue where the Chinese tourists will go to that market and potentially, possibly come into the Macau area? Of course they will, yeah. Do you think they will? Because yeah. at the moment, isn't it, like Chinese are pretty much aimed at Walking Street and they kind of stay over there. They don't really come over here. But do you see that changing? Well, before we were closed, before the COVID hit, yeah. a lot of our customers were Chinese, Japanese, Koreans. Wow. They, they, you know, they, they'll park the buses up and say, okay, you've got two hours. They'll do a bit of shopping and then they'll walk down the streets and have a look and see what, you know, like normal people do. Yeah. They just have a wander around for their two hours and then back on the buses and off they go. Wow. So they I mean, can get the shopping experience and mm -hmm. then they'll come down and have a look and see what else is around. If they do wander around, I mean, do you see them utilising the nightlife here or do you think they'll just wander around and chase a flag like they do in Walking Street? They are not that sort of people. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the tourism we see from overseas, which I've got a lot of experience in yeah. from the Asian market in Vietnam, is they come for a five-day holiday. Like the Vietnamese come here for a five-day holiday, mm. so they go Bangkok, Patea, um, for two days back to Bangkok and back out so they can go to Non Nooch and um, out to yeah. the island. Yeah. And um, you know, that, that is their tourism. They're, they're not here for two weeks, three weeks. Can you imagine though, if they did like swarm the area, can you imagine walking up Soy Bacal with all the bar buses, the motorcyclists? I've seen, I mean, there's I've seen, it, galore. I've seen it in <laughs> Vietnam. You, you won't get the casualties because it, no one can move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honest to God, I, I've seen from Vietnam, we went from everyone was on push bikes, they went on motorbikes, they went to cars, and then we had three lanes of buses in there. And wow. basically, no one could move. Anyone on a motorbike would have to go on the pavements, which are a lot wider than here, and drive up and down the pavements because you couldn't get past the tourist buses. So I guess the question's got to be then, back in the day, not a lot was going on in terms of like the, the amount that you've got to choose from now. So where would be a good place to go for a night out when you were first here? Well, I remember back in the day, we, we couldn't get beef, couldn't get potatoes, we, it, we couldn't get anything. Oh, wow. and, and the main restaurant to go to was the Pig and Whistle and Rosie O'Grady's, and that was your choice, I'm afraid. Can I ask you about the, the, the Pig and Whistle? Because it's a bit of a weird thing that's been going on. Now, they changed it from the Pig and Whistle, and they put a letter at the bottom, making it the Big and Whistle. Yeah. And I went past it the other day, and I see now it's up for sale. Yeah, some Indian boys bought it thinking they could run it obviously we've seen the decline on soy six yeah, seven eight yeah. all of them um and with the covid you know and it's gone on longer than they expected so it is back up for sale my landlord is the one that owns that as well all oh, right because it was i mean to be fair they did get a lot of a, a ribbon because they literally went from the pig yes, to the yeah, big yeah. and it's like oh come on like put a bit of effort into it it was just like <laughs> it, it, the, 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 the shame is a lot of people come to Patea or, or countries move abroad and they don't really know one how to run a business mm. 
They don't know the area and how areas move. I mean, Soyriana used to be the busiest one when I took that on. Now no one goes down there. Mm. And, you know, they, they don't have the education. And then you've got to work with the Thai people in this instance, you know, which is an art in itself. So <laughs> if, you were, a polite way of putting it. <laughs> if you were, if you were born in Ramsey and you came over here, oh. my brother's a Michelin chef. Yeah. He couldn't work with the Thai people. I was going to say, could you imagine Gordon Ramsay being no, in the kitchen with Thai no, people? <laughs> they, they couldn't. My brother couldn't. You know, so it's something we have to. They're not going to come here. We have to. You know, we've got to meet somewhere towards the middle, but yeah, the middle I, part being more in their favour than that. I used to employ about 150 staff when I had Robin's Nest because I had wow. a lot of rooms, and, and that sort of mealage we yeah. were doing was very high. You know, so um, you get a lot of experience with that. Yeah, you get a lot of problems with them as well, but. You know, through the COVID area, they need the job. So we, we don't have the problems of them just walking out of jobs or mama, papa sick, you know. Yeah. So they have to keep their jobs now. Well, in part two, we're going to talk a lot more about your restaurants, about, you know, the, the, the process you've gone from Robin's Nest and now here at the Hungry Hippo. Before we dig into that in part two, I mean, when you're talking about relaxing, where would be your go to place? I mean, you've been here a long, long time. Where would you go just to relax and get away from it? Have you got a particular place yeah, there? I, I did used to go to Koh Samit. Oh yeah, nice. But I, I, I just found it offensive. They were ch I got a work permit that they were charging us 250 baht to go in yeah. on the island. Yeah. And you get the port, port tax as well. So I, I never went back there. Um, so generally we go to um, Bangs Oh, nice. Lovely beach down nice, there. Nice, yeah, yeah. You sit on the beachfront, have some local food. You know, it's nice and quiet. Mm. Have you found over the time, because obviously being here the length of time you've been here, do you find like that they're just chasing your tail all the time? Because obviously when you come here, this place wasn't evolved really. And now, you know, you've gone from having a nice peaceful environment to now it's rammed. You go to Koh Samet, now they're chasing you for, for extra payments, etc. Yeah, now yeah. you're going to Bang Sara. I mean, do you see it ever coming to a sort of like a, a final sort of length where they say, okay, we're, 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 we're where we are now? I, I've never been more so fed up. I hadn't been home for about 25 years and went back to Wales. <laughs> and they were chasing you everywhere you park in. You know, before we could park on the coastline anywhere, you yeah. couldn't park anywhere. Yeah. You know, so it, this isn't a Patea thing. It's a worldwide thing. Governments need money and taxes. Yeah. You know, um, we were... Luckily enough, in the earlier days, we didn't have work permits, we didn't pay taxes, we all got away with murder. Yeah. But it, it's come to a head now, um, as we've seen in Vietnam, where the government want their taxes to pay and make yeah. the place a better and safer place, you know? Mm. It's as simple as that. You've seen Patea evolve. I mean, obviously it's got its badge, and we know why people badge Patea to what it is. And there's always been this discussion, and it's been an interesting discussion. People saying, oh, they're going to try and clean it up. Oh, they're going to stop it all together. I mean, what do you think? I mean, you've been here a long time. In terms of, like, cleaning up the Patea image as such, do you think that's ever going to happen? Yeah. Do you? A lot of money is being invested by certain people. You're talking billions, tens of billions, for Phuket, uh, Phuket Patea, and Bangkok. Now, Bangkok's being dressed up first. I mean, we've seen massive shopping malls and the, the mm -hmm. systems they got there, new train systems gone in and the same is happening to Patea, they're putting a new train in system yeah. in now, then the fast train will come here, um, but they, once they've cleared Bangkok up then they'll clear this one up and yeah it's going to change, it has to change. But, but with the nightlife, do you think the nightlife will survive? Unfortunately countries don't run on bars, if you know about business right, um, bars they're not helping the government, you know, with taxation, work sure. permits, the whole package. Um, so they, every big city has a bar area and they're also paying the relevant dues to the government. You can't have a city made of bars, it doesn't work, not in the future. You look at um, Japan, Malaysia, um, e even Hanoi, uh, Saigon now. They've cleaned it all up, underways are going in. You look at London, you look oh, at Paris, yeah. they got their red light district at the back. Mm. You, you can't have a red light district on the beach mm. and you want to turn it to a family orientated place. So with that discussion in mind, what do you think the future of Walking Street is? If I said to you, fast forward now, two years, how do you see the, how do you see the, the, the right street? The right hand side will go because really? they have been- That's brave, isn't it? That's brave. 
well, that's brave. I might get a shot now. <laughs> <laughs> but we got the marina. Yes. They obviously want to get that working. We got the island and the pier. Yeah. They want to make it, you know, the left-hand side, if you ask me about that, I would say 50-50. Okay. Because you can hardly get rid of all the bars on the right-hand side and let all the bars stay on the left-hand side. Yes, a fair shot. And, you know, people are going to be working from the marina across the front of the bay or from the Hilton and the others to the marina. You know, there, there is a sector for um, Walking Street, half of the Walking Street on the left-hand side. Mm. You know, that can still operate, no problem. Um, other venues, you know, we've seen soy six, seven, eight, all the way up 13, they're all as good as gone. Mm. You know, unfortunately, that, that's the way the planning is on any big city. And when people are spending 30 billion, 40 billion dollars, you know, that's a lot of money to be spending just to say, okay, we'll just leave that. When it, it can't work, it has to work one way or no way. Well, I'm going to say I hope you're wrong. <laughs> Only from a selfish point of view, I hope you're wrong. But I, I the, can see the changes. The I government think, yeah. wants to be like Kuala Lumpur, mm. right? It wants to be like Marina Bay Sands area, mm. right? Look how much money is generating. Look at Tokyo. Yeah. Look how much money is generated in these areas and where is it generated? shopping restaurants nightclubs simple as that yeah. you know you you get those sort of people here they got a lot of money mm. no that's a fair shot well i guess time will tell in two years time i'm going to come back and say robin right come on we're going down the right hand side of august now we're going to go have a night out <laughs> and he's going to say i don't want to i, I serve my own food i don't need to go and eat all those restaurants <laughs> i can't afford walking street prices. oh no me neither flipping hell <laughs> listen it's been fantastic talking to you in part two guys we are going to talk about the whole uh, Hungry Hippo, etc. about the restaurant. I mean, it's an incredible journey that Robin's been on. But before I let you go, one, one question. And yes, I know you said about everything you think possibly will change here. So I'm going to beg to differ and hope you're wrong. But we've got a guy watching this channel, never been here before, coming out after Jan in January for the first time ever. Things have reopened. What's your words of wisdom? Well, things will reopen. That's mm -hmm. inevitable. And there is enough bars on this side of second road yep. to enjoy yourself and have a good time we're seeing many many people coming from areas moving their businesses up here we've seen a lot more gentlemen's club um, nightclubs mm. all that moving into this area um, basically make sure you've got your paperwork correct Mm -hmm. So you're not disappointed in any way when you do land. Yeah. And I feel that the government are going the right way now with everything, slowly but surely. Yeah. You know, because we don't want another close down. <laughs> and, you know, when you come here, you, you got to remember that Thailand, as we go into next year, would have been two and a half years into COVID. So there is very little money here. So be very careful with your money and, you know, how you take care of your personal belongings. Mm -hmm don't blame the people that take your personal belongings you know you're all adults the bottom line is make sure you put it in the safe make sure you're in a safe mm -hmm. room you know and, and be very careful because people need money mm. well there you go you that's uh, straight from robin so take care of yourself make sure you keep your valuables out of sight out of mind and come here and have a fantastic time. Right, well, that's it from us. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you very much, it's been brilliant. Now, listen, part two is gonna come out on Friday. Check out part two. We're gonna talk about Robin's Nest, we're gonna talk about Jolly's, we're gonna talk about the Chunky Monkey, we're gonna talk about here, the Hungry Hippo, a place, would you believe it or not, that serves more dinners and food dishes in a day than most restaurants here will sell in a week. That's how busy this place really is, and I'm gonna show you just why in part two. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Please, as always, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out our members area. More and more members are on board each and every week, and join our Discord group. Get on there, there's over 5,000 people on there now, just like yourself, with a love for this wonderful city that both Robin and I are lucky enough to call our home. All right guys, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. <laughs>